Shalom Israel and welcome to another edition of Yashorala's 20 minute breakdown where I'll attempt to break down the scriptures within 20 minutes but first and foremost as always we give all praises to Yahweh, Baha Shim, Yahweh Shai, Waha Raka Kadash and the Akins and the Elders in the highways and byways pushing this word in truth and sincerity all praises and the elder women teaching the younger women all praises to you too and the camps and the solo brothers going out there making videos, edifying the body, pushing the truth according to scriptures. All praises. Now, what I am going to touch on today is, um, um, let's put it like this. I, in the week, I happened to stumble upon a video of um, Tyler Perry. Yes, the actor Tyler Perry, the one that plays Medea, you know, dresses up as a woman, and he plays Medea, yeah, um, like a tough talking, you know, unruly-ish woman he plays, yeah, and um, now he is at the Lakewood Church that is run by Joel Olstein. now he's gone to Psalms 91, that's where he's quoted, so he's quoted Psalms 91, and he's quoted verse 1, verse 2, verse 3. And then what he does, he jumps to verse 7, you know, and then verse 8. And, you know, he, and, he, and he, um, he, what he does, he, he reads it out, and, like, he steer the congregation, because that Lakewood church is, is a massive church, and, like, I'll play the clip. In this lesson, I will play the clip so you can see it for yourself and you can hear what he says for yourself. But um, this church is it's huge and it's packed out. Yeah, so he quotes them verse and what he does, he steers the, all, the uh, congregation into understanding, understanding that verse the way he wants them to understand it. Yeah, it's always this sweet doctrine, nothing that shall befall you. A thousand shall fall at thy right hand, ten, ten thousand shall fall at thy left side, but none shall befall thee. And all it's like, you know, that's where he's gone. But what he's missed out is verse four, which is very important in that, in that Psalms 91, verse four is very important because verse four really shows you how to get the Most High's protection in all these that he's read out. Now, how do you get that protection? And he makes it like he, you know, Christianity have this thing. If thou shalt believe in thine heart that Yahweh, which it says, Lord Jesus Christ is Lord and God and this and that and that, thou shalt be saved. Just paraphrasing. I don't want to get into too much yet until we get into the lesson. But what they miss, and that is in the book of Romans, that, you know, that is quoted, like Paul is, is telling these people, I won't say who they are, um, in the book of Romans, if thou believe in thy heart and confess with thy mouth, thou shalt be saved. Now, when you go to Romans 7 and 1 now, it tells you who he's addressing. He's addressing people that know the law, men that are already keeping the law. So he doesn't have to tell them they have to keep the law because they were already doing that. He's teaching them Christ, that they must have faith in Christ. That's what that goes into. Now, as in Tyler Perry now, he quotes Psalms 91. Now, in order to get what Psalms 91 verse 1, 2 and 3 says, and then 7 and all that, where all this destruction that's happening, on this is on this is talking about on the day of the Lord's destruction, when he sends the shall I back to judge the earth. When all these things are happening, yeah, nothing will befall you. Why? Verse 4 tells you why, because there's certain things you should be doing. And that's what he hasn't gone into. So I'm going to go into that and show you where Christianity leads you down the garden path, lets you think you're doing right, but you ain't, you're far from the Most High, because you've turned your heart from him, you're keeping no laws, no statutes, you just think you have to live by faith only, and everything will drop on your lap, life itself teaches you otherwise as well, because look at this, you have children, yeah, 
your children's not doing what you tell them to do. You will not reward them just because they say, dad or mom, I believe in you. If they're not doing what you tell them to do, you're not going to reward your children. The most sides are saying, if we are not doing what we, that what he tell us to do, and we're just giving him a bag of lip service, but we're not showing no action with that lip service, he's not going to reward us. But anyway, I'm going to play the clip and then we're going to go into the lesson. Okay, so let's, 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 let me drop that clip in. All right, stay tuned for the clip. I'm going to play the video from here. Now listen to this. Prayer, simple prayer. Prayer is talking to God, just having a conversation with him. God, I need you. God, I need you to be with me right now. God, I need you to walk me through this thing. God, I need you to be by my side. Please, Father, in the name of Jesus, stay with me. Let your blood be with me, O Lamb of God. Thank you right now. Lord, increase my territory. Let your hand of favor stay with me. Keep me from evil that I may not cause faint. You've got to pray, and that is the climb, and then the maintain is the worship. God, you're wonderful. How I love your name. How excellent are you, O Lamb of God. You have no rival. You have no equal. You are the only true and living God. God, thank you for everything you've ever done for me. God, I worship you only you can. You've got to climb and maintain, and you've got to read the word. Now, I'm just going to pause it there now. You see, this is the thing with these Christians. They have all the perfect words, and they sound great from on the outside but on the inside they do nothing what the most high says they keep no commandments no statutes they think just by giving money that's their their ticket yeah but uh, let me play some more i just want you to hear the hypocrisy of christians they're like and then they they run to bible verses and they have no idea exactly what it really means just listen to this i'll play on you got to get into some of those psalms where you really understand that God is on your side. Psalms 91 says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. Surely he will deliver me from the snare of the fowl and from the noise of the pestilence. A thousand shall... Now, let me just pause it there. Now, what he just read was Psalms 91. He read from verse 1 to verse 3. And then from verse 3, he jumps to verse 7, where it says, A thousand shall fall at thy side. Now, he jumps to verse 7. I'll play on in a minute. I just want to show you a point. He jumps to verse 7. Now, he missed out verses 4 and 5. Now. It's fine jumping verses to make your point. But the problem with this Psalms 91 is that the point of all what he says, how you get this protection is in verse four, which is what he skips. Now, let me play on. At my side and 10,000 at my right hand, but it will not come near me. And look at that. People dancing. People love it. That's Christianity. They love sweet words, especially when you don't have to put no actions. I behold and see the reward of the wicked because I have made the Lord, which is the most high my habitation. Therefore, no evil shall befall me, neither shall any plague come near my dwelling. For he will give his angels charge over me to keep me in all of my ways. They will bear me up in their hands, lest I dash my foot against the stone. I will tread on the lion, the adder, the young lion, and the dragon shall I trample under my feet. You've got to get the word inside it. You've got to believe that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You've got to believe it. You've got to believe it. You've got to climb and maintain. You've got to climb and maintain. Now, now that was the main point of really i mean he's trying to preach on overcoming anxiety and then he goes into psalms 91 but that was the main point i just want you to hear how he reads psalms 91 and he tells it to you the way he wants you to understand it and the funny thing is nobody actually reads that verse themselves to get the correct understanding they're all loving what he says and dancing and you know think yes you know but in that day of judgment, 
Are these sweet words going to save you because you haven't done what the Most High said? You've listened to people like Tyler Perry in the Lakewood Church, which is run by Joel, Joel Osteen. You've listened to people like that. Now, when the Most High starts dropping his hammer and starts judging the earth, when pestilence and all these things that will come upon the earth, famine and all this. Now, to get that protection, you have to be doing what verse 4 says in Psalms 91, which is a verse he skipped. And, and that's the obedience of the Christian church. They are disobedient. They've got all the sweet words but there's no action behind it. It's like an empty vessel, as they say. Empty vessel makes the most noise. And that's Christianity right there. Anyway, when I get into this lesson, we're going to break that verse down and you're going to see exactly what that verse is saying. Okay. Okay. Well, you heard it yourself. That was the video. So you heard him read, read Psalms 91. We read, we read from verse 1 all the way down to verse 8. And then we're going to jump back up to verse 4 so I can show you something, yeah? Watch this, yeah? So I've got my timer, and I'm going to start in 3, 2, 1. Boom, we're away. Right, let's go straight there. The book of Psalms, chapter 91 and verse 1, and it reads, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 2, I will say of Yahweh, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. Verse 3, surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Verse 4, this is the verse that Tyler Perry didn't read, or quote, should I say, verse 4. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. There is the point. That's how you get these, these, this um, protection that the Most High is talking about in the day of the snare and the, and the you know, pestilence. And, and basically the World War Three to come. That's what this is going into. Watch this. Verse Five, thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. Now, hear that, the arrow that flieth by day. What's the arrow that flieth by day? You remember, he's seen a vision, arrow. Now, modern day arrow is an, a, a, um, a warhead. Yeah, it looks like an arrow. I'll put, I'll put one on the screen so you'll see. Yeah, and and I'll and I'll prove that further in your C. Yeah, watch this. Yeah, let me read on. Verse six. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Then verse seven. Now this is where Tyler Perry picks it back up. Verse seven. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Verse 8. Only with thine eye shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Verse 9. Because thou hast made Yahweh, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. Verse 10. There shall no evil befall thee. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Now, now you hear that? Now, because, now notice what it said in verse 9. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is Yahweh, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. How have you made him your refuge? Because what you've done, you've kept the patience of the saints. You've kept the the faith of Yahweh Shai and the commandments of the Most High. Like, watch verse 4. I'm going to jump back up to verse 4. Watch this. Psalms chapter 91, verse 4. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wing shalt thou trust. His truth, hear that? His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Now it says his truth. What is his truth? 
that is the shield and buckler. Remember, a shield protects you from the enemy's strike. Like if you got a shield and a buckler. Now a buckler is a centerpiece that's in the middle of a shield, which say you lose your sword and somebody swings their sword, you use the shield to parry that sword. And the buckler now is, is this round metal. It's almost like a little small shield inside your larger shield, which is a, like a metal round kind of like half bowl thing, shall we say. Buckler, you can strike the enemy with that. That can crack a man's skull if you hit him hard enough, yeah? Now, the shield protects you from any danger. So that's what that's talking about. He said, he's truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Now, what is his truth that's going to protect you from that day of the noisome pestilence snare? Let's go to the book of Psalms. Psalms 119, verse 142, and it reads, Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. So that's how you protect. You've kept his law. That's how it's done. And watch this. I'm going to jump down to Psalms 119 again and verse 151. Listen to this. Psalms 119, verse 151. Thou art near, O Yahweh, and all thy commandments are truth. So you see, that's how you get that protection. You've got to be keeping his laws, statutes, and commandments. Watch this. I'm going to quickly jump to the book of Revelations, chapter 4. 14 and verse 12. Listen to this, yeah? This is Revelation chapter 14, verse 12, and it reads, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments, hear that? Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Yahweh, which it says Jesus. So that's how you get that protection. That's the truth. That's the shield and buckler. So that's what Tyler Perry didn't show you you see is how to get that protection that it, te it that it teaches of in all that verse now the arrow that flies by day i wanted to deal with that point as well the arrow that flies by day yeah this was psalms 91 let me jump back to psalms 91 and this was um verses where was it now Verse 5, where it reads this, Psalms chapter 91, verse 5, and it says, Thou shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. Now watch this, yeah? I'm going to jump to Second Ezra's. Watch this, yeah? The book of Second Ezra's, chapter 16 and verse 13. Listen to this, yeah? Second Ezra's, chapter 16. And verse 13, and it reads, For strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow. Listen to this. His arrow that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss. When they begin to be shot into the ends of the world. Hear that? The ends of the world. Listen to verse 14 as well of Second Ezra chapter 6. Chapter 16, verse 14. Behold, the plagues are sent and shall not return again until they come upon the earth. So you see, when the nuclear weapons strike, what are you going to have? Famine, plagues, because there's going to be dead bodies. They're not going to be buried or lamented. So they're going to be like dung upon the earth. And that's going to breed like plagues. Now, the place will be radioactive. Food, there's going to be shortage, there's going to be famine. Now you see what that's going into? And the only way that you'll be guided from all this is by, is by this. I'm going to jump to the book of Psalms, back into Psalms, chapter 19 and verse 7. Listen to this. Psalms chapter 19 and verse 7, and it reads, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord, which is Yahweh, is sure, making wise the simple. Yeah? Verse 8. The statutes of Yahweh are right, rejoice in the heart. The commandments of Yahweh is pure, enlighten, enlightening the eyes. Listen to verse 9 of Psalms chapter 19. 
The fear of Yahweh is clean, endureth forever. The judgments of Yahweh are true, and the righteous all together. So you see, these are the judgments like that it talks about in Psalms 91. Yeah, and the only way you're going to get the protection of the Most High is by what I read to you earlier as well, is back in Revelations chapter 14 and verse 12, is keeping the commandments of the Most High with the faith of the one they call Christ, Yahawashai. That's how you're going to get the protection. Now I'm going to read the book of Malachi. I'm going to read the book of Malachi chapter to 2 and verse 7 listen to this malachi chapter 2 and verse 7 and it reads for the priest's lips should keep knowledge and they should seek the law at his mouth for he is the messenger of yahweh of hosts now you see that's what they're supposed to be teaching you but but listen to verse 8 this is what you've got from them malachi chapter 2 verse 8 but ye are departed out of the way. Ye have caused many to stumble at the law. Ye have corrupted the covenant of Levi, saith Yahweh of hosts, saith the Lord, it says. But showing you, that's the problem with these Christian pastors. They don't teach no laws, no statutes, no commandments. All they say is you've got to believe and you'll be saved. Yeah? Because they jump to the book of Romans. Now, in the book of Romans, Paul is teaching these, these Jews that are already keeping the law. Because it tells you that in verse, in Romans 7 and 1, he says, For I speak to them that know the law, how that the law has dominion over a man as long as he liveth. Showing you the laws ain't gone anywhere. So he's showing you that the, the thing is, he was teaching them the Messiah as the one, as you call Christ. Because they, they weren't believing on him. They were still trying to keep up animal sacrifice. Thinking that that atones for their sins. Not realizing now they have to have faith in the one you call Christ. There's where the problem lies. So the, the churches take those verses way out of context and give you a total different meaning. Now, this is the thing now. Now, watch this. Yeah, I'm going to jump to, um, I'm going to listen to this. Now, this this is your Christian pastors. The Most High knows these people to a T. There's no hiding from him. There we go. This is the one I want. Micah chapter 3, verse 11, and it reads, The heads thereof judge for reward, and the priests thereof teach for hire, and the prophets thereof divine for money. Yet will they lean upon the Lord and say, Is not the Lord among us? None evil can come upon us. Now that's exactly what Tyler Perry did. He said all this, but he's not keeping any laws, statutes or commandments. And he shut up the kingdom of heaven to you also. Because now you're going to believe his sermon and think you don't have to either. When the Messiah himself said this, John chapter 14 something nice and simple john chapter 14 and verse 15 this is clear cut you can't get around this this is the messiah's own words listen to this john chapter 14 verse 15 and it reads if ye love me you say you love the lord you say you love christ as you call him his correct hebrew name is yahawashai that you say you love him listen to what he says at his own mouth john chapter 14 verse 15 if ye love me, keep my commandments. It's that simple. How do you how do you get something different from this? Yeah. yeah. Now this is First Thessalonians chapter five and verse three. Listen to this. Yeah. First Thessalonians chapter five and verse three, and it reads: For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape you hear that now you imagine now when when a woman is is in labor the, the the contractions come upon you suddenly you can't escape them contractions now it's the same as the most i saying these pastors and preachers they're saying peace and safety safety they're preaching all this safety and all this 
this lovely stuff and you're going to be blessed and nothing shall befall you. The Bible says, for when they say peace and safety, sudden destruction, sudden destruction cometh upon them. So bear that in mind, yeah? So you've been warned and you've got priests with itchy ears and you love that sermon. Because even like in the days of Noah, yeah? Now, watch this, actually. You know what? As even I mentioned the days of Noah, I'm not going to talk. I'm going to read it. Watch this. I'm going to jump to the book of Matthew, chapter 24, and I'll take it at verse 37. Listen to this, yeah? Matthew, chapter 24, and verse 37, and it reads, But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Verse 38. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Verse 39. And knew not until the flood came and took them, took them all away. So shall also the coming, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So you see, he's showing you that the same way, because you're not on watch. You're not keeping no statutes, no laws, no, no um, you know, you're not keeping anything that he says. You just think you can get his protection just by faith, by believing you're gonna get his protection. Yeah, but watch this, yeah. Now, this is even Noah, back in them days. Now, Noah was building an ark. It hadn't rained. Now, do you imagine the mockery Noah got while he was building his ark, telling people that a flood is coming and they need to get their self right to be protected of the Most High. He was mocked. He was laughed at, just like how we are today. Those true guy men and women that go out to teach the correct doctrine. Now, watch this. I'm going to jump to the book of Second Peter. Where are we? Watch this. Second Peter chapter 2 and verse 5. See, Noah knew, he was warned of the Most High and he was building the ark. So imagine that. No rain, nothing. Building the ark. Everybody's mocking him and he's still trying to preach to you to get yourself right. Watch this, yeah? Second Peter chapter 2 and verse 5. And it reads, and it reads, And spared not the old world, but saved Noah. The eighth person, listen to this, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. So you see that? Noah was a preacher of righteousness, yeah? So what, and what is righteousness? Let me just show you that quickly. Because he was a preacher of righteousness. That's what, that's what the book says. Now, watch this. I'm going to show you what the word righteousness is according to the Bible. Deuteronomy chapter 6. And verse 25. I like to prove everything I say. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 25. And it reads. And it shall be our righteousness. If we observe to do all these commandments. Before the Lord our God. As he has commanded us. So you see. Being righteous is keeping the laws, statutes and commandments. Yeah. Now. So when the Most High starts sending judgments, sending those arrows, which is them nukes and bombs on the earth, yeah, and you're going to want to be delivered from them, those who ain't keeping these laws, statutes, commandments, well, and the faith of Yahweh Shai, the one you call Christ, what can I say, you know? I can only tell you, the rest is on you. I can't force you. I can give you the word. What you do with it is up to you, yeah? Now, this, this, I'm going to quickly jump back. I'm almost out of time. Quickly show you about this, this shield and buckler. Quickly, watch this. I'm going to quickly jump to the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 22 and verse 31. Listen to this. 2 Samuel, chapter 22 and verse 31. And it reads, and it reads, As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord, the word of Yahweh is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust in him. So you see, you have to trust him. He said, keep my commandments and live and the laws as the apple of thine eye. So that's how you trust him. He said, keep my commandments and live. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Well, I'm, about, I'm out of time now. So you get the point. Do not listen to these lying pastors. All they're going to do is get you destroyed. So with that, this is Yashirala. We out.